Hello and welcome to episode 32 of the Playmakers Corner podcast, where we will be having two interviews with two standouts in Greeley football, one being senior running back out of Northridge High School, Patrick Diem, and the other being freshman quarterback out of Greeley Central, Genoa Trujillo. So please enjoy these two interviews, talking about the future of Northern Colorado football, specifically in Greeley, and, you know, try and heed all the advice that the senior has learned and also pay attention to where the freshman is going. Hey y'all, welcome back to the Playmakers Corner podcast. We have a, another interview today, and you know, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself, where you're from, what position you play, and uh, yeah, just who you are. Oh, my name is Patrick Jim. I play Northridge, or sorry, I play football at Northridge High School. I'm number ten, and uh, I'm looking forward to talking with you guys. Yeah, and we're looking forward to talking to you too. So, you know, obviously you play football. So yep. what is your favorite sports experience or memory while playing football? You know, this could be a specific game that you won over like a close rival. This could be one specific play where you just went off or, you know, it or or it could be something outside of football too, you know, if it's in other sports that you played. Honestly, if I'd have to say, it's kind of a mix, um, you know, coming in from Florida before I even was in Greeley, Colorado, uh, I was coming in as a really underestimated athlete when I came out here and uh, a lot of people looked at me and they were like, Oh, well, we'll be glad to have you at our school as a JV player. When in Florida, I was swinging varsity games with players that were a lot better than me. You know, tearing my ACL wasn't easy, but moving on past it was a, a good thing. And when I got out here and I was a really underrated player, being able to work hard that whole sophomore year, even though, Northridge wasn't really that big of a team my sophomore year. Being able to put the, put my team on the map uh, junior year was really like a heart holding moment for me. Uh, it was really something that I worked hard for. And it's like people don't see the countless hours that I put in beforehand and before my junior year. I mean, the, the work ethic that I have that nobody sees was uh, – probably the best thing for me because junior year when I came in and showed out and showed everybody that I can be a top tier athlete just like anybody else and anybody else around me um it just I mean it felt really good hey we love working with that chip on our shoulder and you know overcoming and stuff like that so congrats on that you know and we love to hear that story about you so I will say uh you know I'm assuming that you're also just a fan of sports in general you know, and this is just a little fun get to know you segment for our listeners and for us. And yeah. I'd say uh, my next question is, what's your favorite sport viewing experience? This could be a live game that you watched and saw, or this could be, you know, something that you watched on TV that's like really vivid to you. Or what? what's one of those situations for you? That's tough. Um, well, I don't know if you guys are Broncos fan, but I grew up in Baltimore. Yes, sir. I'm a diehard Ravens fan. 2012 the AFC conference championship game when the Baltimore Ravens won in overtime (laughs) after Jacoby Jones down the sideline. That's probably one of my favorite live sports moments. I started crying watching that game. Hey, me too. (laughs) For completely (laughs) different reasons. (laughs) I'm going to let it slide. I'm going to let it slide because you're such a good guest. But all right. I mean, it's got to be someone's favorite. And, you know, at the same time, it brings up my least favorite. So, you know, we got that variety on the show. But, um, you know, that that does it for some of these intro questions. Uh, Simon, if you want to start asking Patrick a little bit more about his game and what it means to him, go ahead. Yeah, for sure. Well, first things first, uh, I'm glad you brought up the Broncos game because I am a Steelers fan. And I know y'all have, well... <laughs> loosely attached to the Steelers now after what yeah. happened but I, I there there are probably plenty of Ravens moments y'all could have got me with so glad you got to get Cody on that one so there you go I'll respect though I'll respect so let's <laughs> let's go ahead and jump into your uh evaluation here so for the listeners out there I know by the time this interview drops you'll probably be in the teens or maybe even 20s with our request episodes but, uh, Patrick, I broke you down on request episode five, I believe, part five, that is. And yeah. we talked about a couple other run- – or I talked about a couple other running backs, including Damon Hill and Kale and all of them. So check that yep. out if you haven't yet. But 
you know, first things first, man, I just, uh, we've obviously talked, you know, through DMs uh, quite a bit here, but obviously, you know, the, the listeners weren't there. <laughs> so right. uh, I just got to ask you, you know, what is your reaction to our, or well, I guess to my evaluation of your game, since I was the primary uh, primary uh, evaluator there and you know being ranked as one, one of the best backs of the state at least in my opinion along with some criticism there um honestly it just does nothing for me but make me want to strive because you know you always strive to be the best and from a young age my dad taught me that being the best it takes a it takes a work ethic it takes a mentality almost like a mamba mentality to uh be better than everybody so when i saw your list and i saw where i was ranked uh and then no disrespect out to you guys. I just felt like I could have been uh, ranked way higher uh, if I worked harder. And I feel like I, I underdid myself out there. But where you guys rank me, uh, I mean, with, all, with the respect, being considered one of the best running backs in Colorado, especially when you have like running backs like Christian McCaffrey come out of Colorado, it's like, I mean, it's a compliment. Yeah, no, for sure, man. And, uh, you know, we, we really do mean that. And obviously, there, there are just a lot of really good talent in Colorado. And looking at your film, you are able to do a bit. You know, I, I could confidently say I don't think you're like a one-trick pony type of guy. Um, not at all. I think maybe it was partly the program. And I could say this because I don't <laughs> I'm not part of your program. So you're all good there. But I think it was partly the program you were in that maybe didn't give you as many, how should I say, just looks in different areas in the passing game um you, i think you had plenty in the run game but in the passing game specifically uh they probably could have given you a couple uh more looks because there were some really good catches we saw a couple one-handers thrown in there and that was yeah. definitely impressive for sure so um obviously you have uh, looked at some of the other guys on our list uh, as you just mentioned here but you know i, I do want to ask or actually i i want to bring this up before i hop into this um so i think in episode i want to say either six no part seven that is the request of episode part seven i covered your buddy uh aaron ness your teammate aaron ness over at northwich as well I, I don't know if you caught that one or whatever but i did include this little thing at the beginning and i feel like it's fair and this was after our conversation but i did apologize just a little bit i feel like i might have been a little bit out of line with some of the things i said but uh don't get it twisted it's still honest and it's still um you know how i feel about uh, certain things here right. but i we did talk a little bit about your some of the off the field stuff um well i talked about it and then we talked about it through D dm so do you want to address that right here right now and then we could basically just have that same conversation on air if you'd like yeah um I mean, not a lot of people have the same background story and have gone through the same thing I've gone through. Uh, I mean, you could talk to coaches like Mark Rogie if you really wanted to. And, uh, I mean, ask him. I mean, he's seen me go through it. I was, uh, my mom suffered to uh, stage two cancer in her, in her uterus and her stomach, and she was suffering. And, and, I mean, nobody could pay the bills in the house. I mean, I was working a full-time job while trying to show up to school and trying to play football and trying to take care of my mom and everything. So, I mean, I mean, I, I went through a lot and uh, trying to stay as dedicated and trying to stay dedicated. I mean, a lot of kids want to be as dedicated as I was to still being better than everybody else on the field at all times. I, uh, I really, you know, I really went through a lot watching my mom suffer and I lost my dad when I was eight. So watching my mom suffer was something that I didn't want to see. And she really pushed me to continue to be great at football, even though uh, I was working. I'd rather take care of her than be better at football. Yeah, no, for sure. And I, I understand that. Um, look, just I think you know this and people out there, they should know this. Um, but if if you don't, well, here it is. You know, sometimes the stats and grades and stuff don't tell the whole story. Usually they don't because they're just numbers, right? And yeah. so I understand that. And I think with colleges and coaches, you know, they really want to look at the character of a person um, in depth. But the thing is, it is tough to overlook some of those things because at the end of the day, it's, you know, the numbers are there because it happened um, for one reason or another. And so I totally get that. And so the fact that you were, were doing a lot, right? Um, well, not even just having a lot on your plate, you know, while doing football, school, all that stuff. It 
and was it still able to you know do what you can uh that does mean a lot and that's something that i want to make sure that we acknowledge right here you know you have to be a special kind of tough to do that and i know that because my dad had cancer uh unfortunately he passed away um i want to say my freshman year of college back when i was over at unc and if you didn't know me and cody both graduated from northern colorado so uh we we know what it's like but to to be there that is but um i know it's definitely a struggle you know having to work and take care of your parents and uh get them to their appointments and stuff like that and then you have like school and all that like on the back burner almost uh to do i know that's a whole struggle because i had to do all of it i remember and I, I i feel like i gotta say this here you know i remember having to drive my dad uh to the hospital almost i want to say every wednesday and then sometimes tuesdays and thursdays uh after school you know and <clears throat> that that was tough and if i'm just being straight up honest with you if this is just if uh, this is just the vibe i'm getting here um honestly when your parents are in a situation like that um when your parents are in a situation like that other things just don't matter as much so i don't actually blame you for um you know maybe not having the best grades or maybe not working as well as you probably could have uh at least compared to other guys in football probably because you don't have the time because you have to put your priorities first and i feel like this is the right priority to have in hand so yeah. i just wanted to make sure we address that and whatnot don't get it twisted you know maybe some things went on grade wise academically and i'm talking to coaches here mostly but maybe things went uh a strata academically and whatnot but you know we do have a kid here who's a pretty tough guy and for a kid to be able to do all these things it means something and it should be accounted for for sure and so i wanted to make sure we touched on that all right yep yeah so and that and just honestly and cody could probably agree here you know a player like you who has gone through a lot of life experiences and has had time to mature those are players that some coaches will like because you know you need to have mentally tough players and i do believe you are that so just throwing that out there. But um, with all that being said, let's continue to talk about your game a little bit more. I just wanted to make sure we get that uh, on the table and out here just so that everyone knows. All right. But let's talk football. So so uh, talking about your game a little bit more here, who do you model your game after? This could be NFL, someone you know personally, whatever. But like when you play football, what kind of player are you trying to be? If I'm, if I'm going to be honest with you guys, I I don't really like trying to model after people because nobody's going to be the exact same or can replicate somebody's game the exact same. Uh, I strive to be, like, my own unique athlete. Like, if I had more, like, if I had more attempts out in the slot this year or out at receiver, I could have made a lot of plays that, I mean, just my coaches didn't really give me, which is no blame to them. My coaches just play the game how it's meant to be played and i can respect that but uh i mean i've always worked on my hands i've always worked on my route running ability i've always worked on my footwork and my vision and uh i mean i do some workouts where people are like what are you doing what do you even what does this work on and i'm like well it's like it works on my outside zone it works on my inside zone it works on my counters they're like how so it's just something personal to me that i always try to be unique in my own way so just like you said, you like I run out there like a sledgehammer. Well, there are times where I run out there and I run and I put my shoulder down into people's throats. And then there are other times where I put a foot in the ground and I juke people out and I get to the outside. And there are times where if I have to use my hands, I use my hands and make a play down the sideline. Yeah, no, for sure. And I absolutely agree. It shows on the film, you know, so there's nothing much more to be said about that. So, all right, fair enough. So, uh, obviously, I'm sure you've been able to, you know, look at film of other guys in the state and whatnot, or even maybe not other guys in the state, but just other players you've went up against. But what are two to three qualities that, in your opinion, that separate you from other backs in the state? Um, I'll say character, uh, determination, and last one, I'd have to say my mentality. I have a a fearless mentality it's not like i'm the best athlete in colorado it's not like i'm the fastest uh it's not like i'm the strongest or the most agile athlete but i have that type of lion mentality where i'm gonna go out on the field and whether you think i'm the best or not i'll show you that i can be 
Yeah, for sure. Like a uh, mama mentality type of thing, right? Exactly. For sure. I got you. I got you. Nice. That's an interesting answer. I actually really like that too. A lot of other people talk about their game, but mentally that's where you want to be as well. So that's good. So uh, kind of talking a little bit more about just your game and then I guess a little bit more about the evaluation here, but what what are some things this off season that you are making a point of working on? Um, whether you've already started or something that you're planning on doing moving forward here? Oh, a lot of things is I've been working around my weight transfer a lot. So I'm working on getting, seeing when I'm like bigger, I like 225, 230. And then I'm also seeing when I'm like at 215. So recently I just dropped down to 215 and uh, I'm working on my speed now because I think the way I'm at, I'll still be able to break a lot of tackles and still be able to work on my speed to be kind of more of a, a kind of sneaky burst speed back, not a crazy yeah. back, but some some running back that puts their foot in the ground as soon as they get past that second level they're gone yeah no for sure i get that so this is a little off topic well not that much off topic but in your opinion uh what weight do you actually feel like pretty comfortable at the most is 215 kind of where you're at or do you prefer maybe a little bit heavier honestly my the most comfortable i've ever been playing football was probably uh the central game i was about 205 okay and I was really comfortable there. I mean, if you look at the game versus uh, Central, I mean, it's not like I was slow. It's not like I yeah. wasn't super fast. I had really good speed. I had the ability to make a move in open space. I could run through a tackle. I could get down the sideline. And uh, honestly, I felt the most agile and the most athletic at that point. Ah, uh, okay. So a little bit lighter then. Right. Okay. Fair enough. All right, Cody, go ahead. Yeah, so we're just going to transition a little bit to – uh, the the future right looking forward and stuff and as well as some hindsight but you know you you, you just told us that you came back from you know s- some stuff at UNC and talking to some coaches and I guess like in general what are some things that you're prioritizing from a school or a program heading forward uh one of my one of my major things is going to be uh business for sure uh right now uh being that I'm kind of young and at a young age, I was able to get a job as a salesman. And uh, I'm going to take advantage of that situation and kind of work through being a salesman while playing college football. That way I have the capability of having background for my business degree that I plan on getting. Hey, that's a good thing to have. And uh, I, I got a minor in business administration at the Monfort School of Business here at UNC, and it's a pretty solid program. You know, there's a lot of business experience in the building. I'll say that for sure. A lot yeah. of your professors there will be, you know, people who are still working in the business realm even. So, right. you know, that you'll you'll have that secondhand experience and that real life application looking forward towards UNC. And I guess right. like is is like proximity to home also like important to you given your situation as well uh oh oh i should have probably mentioned this earlier my mom defeated cancer actually three months ago so she's actually defeated her cancer and she's actually looking a lot healthier so congratulations glad to hear that man yeah so she's going back home she's gonna move in with uh my brother out there my brother's gonna take care of her and she's moving back out to Baltimore. So I'll be out here alone, unfortunately. But, you know, it's, you got to do what you got to do, right? Hey, absolutely. And, uh, you know, you, you get a chance to kind of spread your wings as well. Right. So I guess, you know, you, you just talked about that that visit that you just had before this interview. And I guess just kind of going a bit more into detail, how has the recruiting journey been for you? And what are some things that you wish you learned or some things that you wish you knew before you started the recruiting process about the recruiting process? One thing that I will say, and I want a lot of the younger athletes to take this to perspective, um, is use every resource you have to the maximum ability. Uh, I, I had resources, and it, it, it's not like I was trying to be ignorant or anything to push them out. It was just... I had to do what I had to do to be there for my family versus also there for my second family. Um, and I just, I want other athletes to really know that coaches know what they're doing. Uh, 
players, like, there are some players, like, for a good example, Aaron Ness is like a brother to me and forever will be because his family has helped me out greatly. His mom, all of them have helped me out a lot in the recruiting process. Same thing with Coach Hayden and Coach Rogi. Um, so, I mean, it's a scary process, I will say that. But it's also something that you guys have to, like, use your resources and understand that sometimes you yourself don't always know exactly what to do. And you should listen to the resource you do have. Hey, that's great advice. You know, I, I know that uh, as a high schooler, you think that you can know it all sometimes. So, you know, th- these younger players definitely need to hear that, right? To uh, take advantage of the resources you have and recognize them as resources too. You know, that's almost like step one of it. So I appreciate you sharing that. And I guess now that your high school football career is over, what are your outlooks or goals for college football? I want to – it's either I want to start off low – or I want to start off at a decent level. So if I start off low, it'll be at a JUCO level to work my, just to get my grades in check, just so I can work my way up to a higher college. Um, and then hopefully if I work, I mean, I, I have plans on working hard enough to try to at least make the combine or get a couple tryouts to some NFL teams in a few years. Hey man, I love those goals for you. You're shooting for the stars and, we love to hear that, and obviously we wish everyone the best when, when reaching for those goals. So, um, Simon, if you want to kind of take the reins on these last few questions and uh, elaborate and wrap us up here, go for it. Yeah, no, for sure. So we kind of already talked about advice here, but this one's a little bit more general. So this could be uh, like on the football field or in school or whatever. So just keep that in mind. But with one semester left in high school, because – um, I believe you're still at, still at Northridge, right? Yeah. Okay. So with one semester left, you know, what's some advice uh, you would give to high school athletes looking to go to that next level, whether it's academic, uh, athletically, whichever? Um, one thing I'm going to say, and I know a lot of people preach this nowadays, is uh, academics should be first. And the reason why I say that is, if academics aren't first, you can consider your athletic career out. You should consider like athletics at the top of everything. Strive to be the best student in the class. And that's one thing, again, I will preach about Aaron Ness is he strided to be the best ac- like academic student before he just strided to be the best athlete. And that's what made him a really great athlete to this day. Yeah, no, for sure, man. And uh, I mean, I mentioned that in the breakdown as well, but that's really good advice to give. Um, I mean, honestly, you know, it it sounds like really like simple advice, but you know, when you're in high school and whatnot, it does get away from you sometimes. So that's oh. totally understandable, you know, oh. right. Get focused is what you're saying. Exactly. Yes, sir. And priorities too, I guess. So, yep. all right. Interesting stuff. I love that. All right. So, um, as we're kind of wrapping up here, uh, you did mention Aaron Ness quite a bit and some other people, but is there anybody else in particular who you like to mention who has been really important to your academic or athletic career that you'd like to thank on the show? So this could be friends, families, coaches, fellow players, teachers, whoever. I do. I have a, I have a couple amount of, or a couple people that I will say. Uh, there's one athlete at Northridge High School. And, I mean, I'll send you the clip, but, I mean, this kid is one of those guys that if I could say he reminded me of anybody, he reminds me kind of like Ronnie Lott. He puts their helmet, his helmet right in the middle of everybody's chest, and he just tries to just knock the wind out of them. And uh, that player is Jose Chavi, and uh, he played strong safety for us for a good four years. And, I mean, he's been a great athlete, and he's really improved. And I think he should have more college opportunities than what he has because he's a great student, and he's also, a, like, I can't stride this enough. He's a great hitter. Perfect form tackles. He has really good speed. And I think he deserves a little bit more recognition. And uh, I'll say a shout out to both the head coaches I've been under in my high school career. I'll say Fulton. I I really do want to thank Coach Fulton uh, for a lot. He didn't, not like he was there for me all the time, but he he really uh, showed me that he cared and he really wanted the best for me at all times. Uh, even though he kind of shows it in a different manner. Uh, <laughs> um, 
Uh, Fulton was really somebody who influenced me to get better at the game, whether it was because he thought I wasn't ready or whether it's because he was more there off the field than he was on the field. And then uh, Coach Jeremy Hayden, I want to say thank you to him for coming in and being one of the best head coaches I've played under in uh, all my football career so far because, I mean, Coach Jeremy Hayden was insane for me. He, uh, he taught me a lot on what it takes to be a man. He taught me a lot on what it takes to be a great athlete and what it takes to be a leader. And, uh, I mean, I could thank him and preach to him all day if I really need, if I really wanted to. Uh, I want to thank Aaron Ness's mom, Laura Ness. She's been a great motivation and a great, like, second mom to me. So I'll thank her. And then Coach Mark Rogge. Uh, obviously, I, I'm pretty sure you guys know who he is, and mm-hmm. a great offensive coordinator. I mean, he would – me and him, I remember one time – and sorry for stretching this, but – you're good. Uh, my junior year, I was having a tough time, and uh, he got mad at me because we were doing walkthroughs, and I was jogging instead of running full speed. And uh, I told him, I was like, "Well, you guys told me to jog and not run full speed." And then he got mad at me, and we got into an argument. And I mentioned that I could be at home taking care of my mom, but I'm here fighting for you guys because, like, all the players didn't know the plays. And I'd go home and I'd study plays and do the homework I had to do and take care of my mom and then go to work right after. And uh, it was it was a bit irritating. Uh, I was a bit more immature at the time. And uh, I just really want to thank Mark Rogge for just being being there for me as a, and seeing what I was going through as an athlete at the time. Uh, I mean, he did, he did a lot of great things for me and he really helped me out a lot. And then Coach Donnie Edick, I don't know if you know who he is, that's a crazy guy. <laughs> This is one of the craziest guys I've ever met. And then, uh, sorry, but the last the last one I'm really going to think, or the last two, is going to be uh, Coach Wagner. Uh, Coach Wagner has been with me for the last three and a half years of football. And, uh, man, uh, that's a, he's a good guy, man. He's pretty old. We used to call him, we call him the old fart at practice because, I mean, he was <laughs> the oldest guy in the field at all times. And he was hilarious. He was always there. He... He was really one of those guys that cared about cared more about the athletes than he did the game, and uh, I gotta say from him, uh, he was great help seeing uh, seeing life from a different perspective rather than seeing life from a from a standpoint and a first person just perspective rather than a third and seeing everything else. And then uh, again, I'm gonna thank Aaron Nash because, uh, like I said, that kid has been a hard brother for me for the last three and a half years and I mean he has really been there for me just as an athlete as a brother as a as a friend as a best friend and all aspects of the game he's been there for me and uh I mean I don't know where I'd be today if I didn't have somebody like that in my life and then uh a guy that I wish played our senior year together sorry but you're good keep going Israel Kampa is a I think that kid had a lot. Of, he has a lot of potential, and nobody understands his work mentality because he's such a laid-back guy. But I mean, if you guys look at his film versus his sophomore year, if you look at all the film from sophomore freshman year, kid went from throwing the ball 15 yards to slinging the ball about 55, 60 yards in a matter of two years, and he did that on accuracy. And that's you can't ask more out of a guy who was underrated and then comes in and shows out shows that he can play quarterback even for his size even if he has more of a fullback build I mean he's like a big Ben out in the field when, and then when he gets out he's just agile and you would think a guy his size is agile like I don't understand it I watch him shake people out their cleats sometimes and it's just like wow yeah and, uh, no, for sure keep going my bad sorry I'm just <laughs> I'm just gonna finish off and i'm not really going to say much about uh this last two i'm gonna thank uh jose chavi for everything his determination uh there were times where i watched that kid and he just wanted to give up and he just didn't want to play anymore and then i told him i was just like it's not worth it that's not worth leaving i was like i was like leaving's gonna do less for you than it will stay and uh watch him come back and it's he, the one of the best safeties in Greeley, Colorado, if not the best. Um, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna thank the freshmen, sophomore, and senior classes that I've been around uh, my whole high school career, uh, because I mean, 
God bless them. I mean, they're just great people, and they they really show a lot. And uh, I expect a lot out of the Northridge athletes that sat behind uh, me, Aaron, and all of our senior, all of our senior class this year. I expect a lot out of those kids. I mean, those are some great, humble kids who really seek to be the best. And seeing kids nowadays come up and listen versus tell, it says a lot about their character and charisma. And, and I just think that all those kids, are, they have a great opportunity to be great athletes. And uh, yeah, that'll be it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're all good, man. Don't apologize for shouting out those who have helped you out. Um, I, personally, I love that you shouted out so many people. It shows that you have an appreciation for your support and your Northridge fam and your football fam for sure. And, and whoever, you know, so um, don't be sorry about that at all. Also, Quick side note here. We'll probably leave this part in, but make, make, send us that film of uh, some of the boys you mentioned, and we could do a breakdown on them for sure. All right? Yeah. All right, cool. So um, let me see here. So right here, uh, we're, we're kind of wrapping it up here. Uh, first things first, you know, I love your mentality. I think you're a heck of a kid. You're someone who, you know, put in the work in the weight room and, you know, you've overcome a lot. And that's something that colleges like to see for sure. Uh, you got talent. <laughs> you got the, just honestly, you got a lot of talent. I think the biggest thing you you got to you got work on slash really focus on here is just, you know, finding, I guess, how should I say this? You know, f finding that way or finding that spot that you really like playing at and then just dominating there. You know, finding a, a, a good spot where you really feel comfortable at, at comfortable at weight-wise, I would say, and just dominating. Because I feel like, and this is kind of just throwing it back to the evaluation here, I feel like, you know, there were times you did look a little bit faster than you were or, you know, maybe you had a little bit more stamina, a little bit more juice here and there. And so I feel like if you find that sweet spot specifically, that sweet spot between power and speed and all that, you'll be in a pretty good spot because um, we I did looking at your film you were a little bit all over the place I would say a uh, weight and speed wise at times and so there you go I don't think that's that big of a deal though I mean if you continue to work hard it'll you know it'll, it'll fall into place so you're all good there all right? right but all that being said man we really do wish you the best of luck moving forward if you do become a UNC bear, you could best believe me and Cody are going to come up and watch your games for show. Uh, but, you know, if you go to a Juco or anywhere else, which is never a bad idea because, honestly, I do think you are a D1 player if you get it right, and I think you will, um, then, you know, there you go. And we'll for sure watch you uh, wherever you're at and be rooting for you, man. Uh, Cody, do you have any last things you'd like to say or uh, thoughts you'd like to share with Patrick here before we wrap it up? Not really. I appreciated the the long shout out, you know, segment. It's probably our longest one yet, and I think that it's something that younger athletes need to hear so that they can recognize the support systems that they have in place, and you know, show a little bit of gratitude and recognition to those parties in place that have helped them out. You know, I don't think there's been enough shout out of, uh, you know, shout out to the magnitude that you did. So I want to thank you for that and just for joining the show. And obviously, I, too, wish you the best of luck at the next level, wherever it is. And, um, you know, just, just keep working hard. That's all you can do, right? So just keep it up. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, no, for sure. So thank you to you guys for the opportunity. It's a, it's a big opportunity to have somebody be willing to go out, go out of their way for me. Yeah. No, well, for sure, man. I mean, you're a heck of a talent, first off. So <laughs> we were going to have to come to your uh, film eventually and break it down. So don't get it twisted, man. I mean, thanks, f thank you for coming on and all that. So we got you for sure. All right, that'll wrap up this episode of the Playmakers Corner podcast make sure to follow us on all of our social medias uh that's facebook instagram twitter tiktok as well and remember if you want to request somebody uh, make sure you include their name position they play and where they're from slash the high school they're from so peace Thank you so much for listening to the Patrick Diem interview, which make sure to stay tuned because that is only the first of our two Greeley players, Patrick Diem obviously being from Northridge. And coming up next, Genoa Trujillo at Greeley Central High School, the freshman quarterback. Coming up next.
What's good, y'all? Welcome back to the Playmakers Corner podcast. I am one of your co-hosts, Simon Voyanos. Join with me. I got my other co-host, Cody Stoffer, and a special guest. So uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, man, your name, uh, position you play, and then what high school or uh, city you're in. All right. Uh, what's going on, guys? My name is uh, Juno Trujillo. I play quarterback at Greeley Central High School. And uh, thanks for coming on to the show, man. Um like I say, hey, make sure you check out that episode. Uh, I want to say that was like episode. Cody, help me out here. It's like episode twenty or something like that. Where it's we uh, twenty five, I think. Twenty five, where we uh, broke down a bunch of the underclassmen talent in the state of Colorado, specifically quarterbacks. And Genoa, you know, obviously he was requested a ton. So we're really happy to have you on, man. But before we get into it, you know, we ask all of our guests this but you know what is your favorite sports uh i guess experience or memory while playing so this is a memory that you got where you know you're obviously participating in and this could be football or any other sport um honestly i would say a lot of my memories in baseball you know uh i feel like baseball is one of those sports where it's very independent and very uh uh kind of how you would say uh you have to always you have to have a quick reaction to flush things out and i guess that's a good thing of being a quarterback and being able to knock out the noises and just play your game but i guess i would probably say one of my um moments in arizona when i uh hit a i first run my travel team and uh we um we're in arizona and i hit a inside the park home run you know but I think it's interesting to say that the coaches really didn't know me. I didn't really know them. And we kind of kind of developed that relationship there. Yeah, for sure. And that's always a good thing. All right, man. So we assume that you're also a sports fan. And so what's your favorite sport viewing experience? So this could be something you see on TV or in person. And like I said, it could be any sport. Uh, it's college football, definitely. You know, I love the the atmosphere they're in, the type of playing they have the it's just amazing yeah for sure and i totally get that all right cody do you want to go ahead and uh start talking about genoa's game here yeah so transitioning a little bit from getting to know you to uh your game i'm assuming that you heard the episode and um you know saw um all of our analysis on you what was your reaction to our evaluation of your game Honestly, man, I just I love getting better, and that's my that's been my whole thing, especially with my dad telling me, you know, that that your spot's not always guaranteed. You got to work for what you want, and uh, I guess that's something that you guys also said too. You know that it's 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 a not not it's constructive criticism. You know, you guys are trying to get me to the, want me to get to the next level. You guys want the best for me, and I just think that it was it was a good look for me and see a different perspective of what people have to say hey we appreciate that you know and uh we appreciate the conversation that we had with you in dms where it's like yeah i i know i need to get bigger so we appreciate you hearing it and then like taking it to heart and you know grinding on it and that's what's going to make you a better football player and you know that's one thing that i think kind of separates you know the people who are going somewhere with football versus the people who aren't going anywhere is being able to accept that critique, that feedback, and then use it to get better. So, you know, that's a very mature thing to do, but talking about your game, is there any kind of quarterback or quarterbacks, you know, this could be whether you played with them, you know, at a different point in your life or high school quarterbacks that came before you college quarterbacks, pro quarterbacks from any point in time that you kind of model your game after. Um, honestly, I mean, I could say when I was growing up a lot, I watched a lot of, um, Johnny football. Um, and yeah, man, I just, that's, that's probably who I grew, grew up kind of watching a little bit, saw his, his game and kind of try to do what he did a little bit, but that, that's probably the guy. Making me feel a little old saying you're modeling your game after Johnny football, which was like when I was a bit older, but. Yeah, you know, he was very dynamic, especially during his college football days. So I can understand that playmaker like mentality that you're going to try and bring with you onto that high school football field. So but just model the on the field stuff, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, talking, you know, from 
your role, your model or who you model your game after to you, what are two to three qualities that you think make you a distinct quarterback? You know, this could be, you know, like mental preparation. This could be like work you put in. This could be like your, your legs or, you know, whatever you think makes you a different quarterback from other quarterbacks in the state. I would say, honestly, man, I, um, I'm a team leader. I want to, I want to be that guy in the room, the guy that's gonna bring back the team from a, from a losing win streak that we have there. And I feel I want to be that guy. Um, another thing is, I feel like I have really good, um, playing quarterback for so long. You kind of develop the game of it and ha- knowing how to play um, that. And probably one more thing would probably just be using my athletic ability to. Whether it's run and throw, throw on the run, and I think that baseball has helped me a lot with throwing on the run. So I think that's probably one of the best things for me. Hey, those are good things to have. You know, like like you said, that awareness of just like playing the game for a long time. You can't really coach that awareness. So that's a good trait to have on your side, especially when you're trying to, you know, change change the history and change the uh, legacy over there at Greeley Central. So sure. Simon. Um, if you want to go ahead and take the reins here. Yeah, for sure. So obviously last season is over. And, you know, when me and Cody were doing that breakdown, we didn't realize initially how many really good teams y'all played. Obviously, y'all played against uh, Loveland, I want to say, who won state. And yeah. um, and they didn't just win state. They dominated at state. Then you know, you got Skyline, who should have made the playoffs, in our opinion. Just going to be honest. They're a top offense in the state. And uh, so that was a rough one. And then... I think Windsor was another one as well. And they're always good. You know, you could always expect them to be good. And so with that being said, you had a lot of tests this last season. And so moving into this off season, you know, you obviously got, you know, a good amount of things uh, to work on because you did go up against a lot of uh, very quality teams. And so with that being said, you know, what is some things that you are going to make a point of working on or have already made a point of working on this off season? Obviously, uh, I guess you didn't, we didn't say this on air yet, but in our DMS, you did say that you've been putting in work in the weight room and have gained, I want to say 10 to 15 pounds. Is that right? Right. That's correct. I'm sitting about uh, 180 right now. Okay. Um, from, I was at 165 during the season and my one, 180 right now and probably probably sit here a little bit get some more work here and then a lot of my stuff in the weight room's kind of paying off my uh my deadlift's about one fit i mean 350 right now my squat is 285 and my bench is about 165 nice there you go and you know that's a lot of things that we obviously saw coming you know you're just a freshman so you got time to develop and so that's good that you're hitting that weight room because um, well, in our opinion, obviously, it would translate onto the field and it will make you, I guess, make you a little bit more comfortable making some of those bigger plays that need to be made on that high level there. So that's good. But all that being said, you know, what are some resources that you have been using to improve as a quarterback? This could be like camps or trainers or, you know, different spots where you work out. Um, honestly, I am. Um... Uh, I started working out during last summer, and it was from my boy Leon Ramirez and uh, Chino Salazar, and they were they were with me through the summer when I was uh, going into my freshman year, and you know it was kind of hard to work out and stuff because of COVID and everything, but they 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 were kind of there for me and kind of showed me the ways of lifting. Like back then, I couldn't even I barely benched the bar, and so I think they're they're one of the guys that kind of were there for me. Um, that and Giovanni, he goes to Valley High School. I think there are some a lot of guys that um, pushed me, gave me workouts and stuff. And besides like going on football stuff, that's kind of just all kind of just from doing my research on uh, Quincy Avery or like um, just YouTube. You know, that's some of the stuff you know I got to do on my own. Um, I'm not the biggest guy that can afford everything, afford all the big camps, so. Just sometimes just get it, get in, use my resources and get stuff done. Yeah, for sure. And there you go, man. Uh, that's <laughs> that's how you ball on a budget, basically. You got to do what you got to do. And, you know, that's totally fine as long as you get better. At the end of the day, you just got to show out on the field. And so that's good that you're still trying to improve, though. There are some freshmen for sure that, you know, they, they don't take advantage of all the resources they possibly could. So that's a good thing. But, uh, Cody, why don't you go ahead and take it away from here? 
Yeah, I got you. And, man, I, I know that grind coming in as a scrawny freshman. You get, like, the five-pounders on the bar, and you're having a pretty good day. So I just want to say I relate to that. And, uh, you know, uh, we appreciate your perspective on, you know, not everyone has access to camps. And it's a thing yeah. that I think a lot of players take for granted, you know, especially when we talk about top players in the States, you know, and talking about resources that are available, right? You know, so you can almost see a correlation. So making the most of what you have and using YouTube and, you know, getting creative with it is something that a lot of high schoolers need to listen to because, you know, like you said, not everyone can get into those camps. I couldn't get into those camps. I could barely do our team camps. So, you know, just because cost is something to consider and access is something to consider. So I appreciate you sharing that. Now, talking a little bit about what like the history and then moving forward a little bit so last season simon already brought it up you faced some tough teams you know windsor you know loveland who went on twin state monarch who we did i did a breakdown on kyle gordon who is going to play as a d2 or d3 quarterback naia so you know and skyline so all of these teams have produced next level players and you faced off against them in your first year and i believe Correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't it your coach's first year at Greeley Central as well? Or second um, year? Well, he actually coached back there in the 90s, and he took them to state, actually. They were runners up at state. And so now we're kind of just um, going back to what we had. And so this is his first year, though, as coaching with the whole new coaching staff. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So, you know, lots of new faces or, you know, faces coming back kind of thing and putting all the puzzle pieces together. There's a, there's a lot going on. So with, with all this in mind, or with last season in mind specifically, how has last season impacted your focus this offseason? And what lessons did you learn from your freshman year? Um, Honestly, I'm going to tell you guys right now, uh, I wasn't able to play. I, I didn't get to start our first game, our um, game versus Windsor. Um, there was another quarterback that kind of went on. He was a sophomore. And... Um, we competed for a little while at practice and everything, but he ended up getting the starting job for the first game. Uh, we we end up we end up going quarters, so it was kind of a weird thing. We kind of went. Um, he went first quarter, I went second quarter, and third, and then I went fourth. It's kind of weird. It's, it's, it's a it was a weird, really weird thing, and um, uh, I didn't really get to start very the first game, so my confidence was kind of low. And um, then that next game that we had versus uh, Loveland. I got the star, and it was like it, it's kind of a thing where it's it's like all right, your first game versus Loveland, uh, like you guys said, a state champion, and it's one of those things where you just got to be ready for whatever you have. And I think um, from this year, my biggest thing was just learning that your spot's not always guaranteed, and you got to work for everything you have. Yeah, that's uh, I haven't heard about the uh, quarter swapping in yeah I, I i didn't know that y'all did that so that's definitely a surprise to me you can see it on simon and i's face that we're a little surprised by that that's not necessarily a tactic i would use but um you know that's that is something to consider in a lesson where it's just like you have to compete at every given second and you could be called up at any given second you know and that's a mentality that i think that it's important for you to have and it's important to share with your team right because yeah. at the same time it almost doubles as the next man up kind of mentality where it's like, you should always be ready to go onto the field just in case, you know, you're called up by the coach or, you know, an injury happens or what have you, somebody gets ejected. Maybe you have to be ready to play some high school football. So, you know, just being ready, being prepared. And, you know, I think that there's something that you could take away from that too, as far as, you know, preparing during the week as well. And just, you know, maybe making some adjustments as well in game and stuff. So, a lot of on the feet kind of thing because yeah. we talk about everything you could do in the off season, but then part of it's just like on the fly kind of stuff. So, and talking about this upcoming season, how do you feel about this upcoming season? You know, with, you know, like your second coming into your second year, you're getting work in the bench in the weight room and you know, you're getting to know your teammates a little bit better and the coaching staff is maybe a bit more concrete. How are you feeling about this upcoming season? Um, I'm really excited. You know, we have a great senior class. I, I feel that we have one of, we're going to have a really good senior class this upcoming year. Um, there's there's some dogs, my dogs. Um, there are going to be some seniors in our freshman class that was this year. 
uh, the ones that are going to be sophomore next year. We're going to be really good, and I feel like we're going to have a pie. This will be the best year that we could have for talent-wise, and I feel like it's going to be a great with our coaching staff getting everything handled, and I think we're going to be a great team, you know, and I, I just want to be able to be that leader again, and just I love being on the field, being a leader, and letting my guy help my guys out, you know, trying to get some more of those guys that are seniors that could that should be able to play at the next level and get them some, some offers and get them some, some looks. So I think that's my goal this next season. So what would you say that you need to do to – or like what what you need to do in-game or out of the game to be able to help those seniors and put Greeley Central on the map a little bit? Like what do you think you need to do differently this year than you did last year? Honestly, man, just compete. I think our biggest thing right now is compete and get numbers on the field. You know, um, we um, it's hard for us to – you look at our size and you look at our weight, you look at – Everyone that's on our team compared to other teams like Windsor or Loveland, they're just they, – they have players. They have people that want to play. They have people that are working out consistently. We don't – some some of our guys don't have the luxury of doing that. And I think that's the, our biggest thing. Is, my biggest thing is to just get more numbers on the field, get everyone in the weight room, and get our team going, get everyone ready for the season. Yeah, absolutely. And – you know, I, I coached in the district this this past year, and I know that in Weld County, you know, there's a lot of stop and start kind of going with like the number of cases and stuff. So, you know, that makes it a little bit different. And I know that a lot of Greeley teams' seasons were cut short due to COVID this past year. So hopefully that's a little bit more under control. And so that like stability helps out a little bit for you heading into this year. But So what are some goals that you have for the rest of high school football? So we talked a little bit about this year, but this is looking even a bit further into the future, you know, junior, senior year. What are your kind of goals as a student athlete? My goals, honestly, are to just start getting better as a player, um, per per se. Like, I I just got to do my own stuff, get better as a player, and then not only help myself out, but help some of my other guys out that – deserve to play at the next level I see it in their heart they have the passion to play at the next level and I feel like my goals are to like everyone else get a division one offer and play at the big time SEC schools big 10 you know play there um that's probably my biggest goals is just getting to that next level and trying to better myself for life hey man and you know you heard Simon and I talk on the uh podcast and you know, it, it's possible as long as you put in the work and, you know, there's a lot of room for growth for sure. And it's it's possible to do, you know, and especially with your goals in mind on, you know, basically rewriting like a history and changing a culture. If you're able to do that, then there's nothing that you can't do, I think. So, you know, that that's from me and that's from Simon as well. But I'm going to pass it over to Simon. Simon has one more kind of opportunity for you to shout out people. And, you know, you've kind of done that intermittently throughout the episode. But I'll pass it to Simon, and then we'll wrap up this episode, man. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, for sure. So uh, before I get into that, actually, I wanted to ask you this question. So, well, a couple questions here. But, Janela, uh, you listened to the whole, like, segment, right? Your segment, right. that was? Right. Okay. So <laughs> I'm going to be honest. Me and Cody – one of us more than the other definitely kind of ripped into the program as a whole. And now this is an, ap- an apology because I'm just going to be honest, you know, uh, the central program, the Greeley central program hasn't been um, what it, what it was before, you know, back in the nineties and before. And so they haven't had that type of success. And so we're just calling it how it is. I'm just going to throw that out there. But with that being said, we did talk about, you know, changing the culture and a stat will First off, establishing a culture and whatnot. And so I know you do have a new head coach and whatnot, but how's that been? You know, how's the culture been at Greeley Central uh, this last season and then uh, into this off season? Because I know, you know, y'all, you did say you struggled with numbers a little bit here, but I just wanted to ask you what you thought about that. Uh, first off, us talking about the culture at Greeley Central and then, you know, how that culture has been since. Honestly, um, I feel like the coach is getting really good. I have a great connection with my coach, uh, my head coach, uh, Jeff Priestley, and I have a great coach with all of the coaches. You know, they're amazing guys. They want the best for us. They want 
they also want to see us win. They want to see us go to the next level. And I feel like, honestly, the co- culture is just going to – I want to change the culture. That's my biggest goal there is to change the culture and stop being known as the, the little guys, not the biggest guys, the guys that don't really win. And I just want to be that guy that can change it, you know, the guy that they remember. For sure, and that's a, that's a good goal to have, and a good attitude, too. It sounds like you've bought in, and so that's definitely a good thing, um, a good sign, for sure. So, all right, then. Well, just wanted to throw that question out there, but since we are wrapping up here, um, you know, getting to the end of the interview, is there anybody in particular who you probably haven't mentioned yet that you'd like to mention who has been important to your academic or athletic career uh, that you'd like to thank on the show? And so this could be friends, family, coaches, and then other players. Yeah, honestly, I'm starting off with players right now. Uh, Leon Ramirez, he's my he's my dog. You know, it's my it's my it's my it's my guy right there, and he's a he's one of my best O line O linemen right now. And I, I think you have to really look at him. He's a he's great O line. He graduates next year. Um, him and yeah, here uh, Chino Salazar, and uh, he's one of the great guys. Um, he's a great guy. He's a 4.0 GPA. He's a He's really he's really good athlete and student student athlete and him and all my younger guys all my freshman guys my young guys like Alfredo Gonzalez Jaden Anzurez Caden Mays all these guys that I hope for, hopefully that they you guys can hear their name in a couple years and they're they're my guys that are just always motivating me I always want the best for me and always see the brighter future for me and just my family for always being there for me and my dad you know as a single parent taking care of me and just being able to being able to give me everything I need and trying to give me everything I need, all the resources I have. And my brother also just always being there for me and just giving me everything I can. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, shout out to your dad as well. I think I mentioned this on the podcast, but, you know, he did bring me on to uh, y'all sixth grade team over at Heath for yeah. a minute there. And that was a really fun time. And, you know, your dad's definitely one of the best coaches I've been around. Um, no cap, you know, and just a really nice guy in general. You know, I, I had a ton of fun when I was over there. So I, I just had to throw that out there. But all right, then. All right, so that'll wrap up this interview with Genoa Trujillo. Um, we really appreciate him coming on to the show. And, you know, make sure you check us out on all of our social media. So that's Instagram, TikTok, uh, Facebook, Twitter as well. Make sure you check out and subscribe to our YouTube channel because we'll be posting um, this interview, obviously, uh, with uh, base cams and all that great stuff. And then we'll be posting more content soon here uh, from all of our you know, playmakers from the class of 21 and then all of our breakdowns. So make sure you check all of that out. And then, you know, uh, since you're already listening to us, whether it's on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or YouTube or whatever streaming platform you're on, Go ahead and give us a good rating. We appreciate it. So that'll wrap up this episode of the Playmakers Corner podcast, and we will see you next time. Peace. Peace.